you, Mr. Ch Mr. Speaker. I first want to thank Chairman Greg Meeks and Ranking Member Mike McCall for helping bring this bipartisan resolution to the floor today. I also want to thank my, uh, my partner in so much uh, of this enterprise with respect to NATO and NATO Parliamentary Assembly, Mr. Turner of Ohio. HRS 831, which we introduced together, Mr. Turner and I, calls on the United States government to uphold the founding democratic principles of NATO and establish a center for democratic resilience within NATO itself. NATO's founding document, signed here in Washington, D.C., on April 4th, 1949, this very week, it's clear NATO is an alliance of democracies. The preamble to the treaty notes the determination of allies to, quote, safeguard the freedom, common heritage, and civilization of their peoples founded on the principles of democracy, individual liberty, and the rule of law, unquote. The Alliance's commitment to shared democratic values is what distinguishes NATO from any other military alliance. Without it, NATO is just another military bloc that does not like Russia. This commitment cannot remain purely aspirational or rhetorical. It must be operationalized. That's why we believe we need formal architecture within NATO dedicated to the promotion and advocacy of democracy. There are divisions and units within NATO dedicated to collective defense, terrorism, interoperability, hybrid warfare, cyber, climate change, and a number of other security challenges. But after 72 years, there's not even a broom closet at NATO headquarters dedicated to the promotion of democratic institution building within the alliance itself or with prospective members. The effort to establish a NATO Center for Democratic Resilience is an idea first proposed in 2019 as part of a white paper uh, this member of Congress wrote on NATO at 70. Uh, as the current president of NATO Parliamentary Assembly, I've taken that recommendation and made the strengthening of NATO's founding democratic values our number one priority. The Assembly has in turn endorsed this idea, the establishment of a Center for Democratic Resilience, and made it central component of the Assembly's pro-democracy agenda within NATO. And we were pleased to see the proposal included in the group of experts report commissioned by the NATO Secretary General as we prepare for updating the strategic concept. The U.S. delegation to the NATO PA, which includes Chairman Meeks and Representative Mike Turner of Ohio, Linda Sanchez, Brett Guthrie, Rick Larson, Neil Dunn, Brendan Boyle, Jack Bergman, Dina Titus, Austin Scott, and Philemon Vela, have jointly written to the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, and our Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, encouraging the Biden administration to work with our NATO allies to operationalize support for our shared democratic principles and to establish this center of democratic resilience. And to the credit of the Biden administration and the U.S. Ambassador to NATO, Julie Smith, they've followed up on this recommendation. When we met with the NATO, uh, I'm sorry, with the North Atlantic Council in February in Brussels, Ambassador Smith made a forceful case for the establishment of the center. And we were encouraged to see several NATO ambassadors join her in taking up the mantle and arguing in favor of this proposal. Today, the values upon which the alliance have been founded are being challenged by external enemies of democracy, all too tragically being witnessed in Ukraine. These forces aim to undermine the faith in and political support for our common democracies and the alliance itself. The strongest weapon we possess to counter effectively Putin or Xi's authoritarianism is a vibrant, robust, and immutable expression of the liberal democratic values that bind us. Putin's renewed full-scale aggression against Ukraine is a blatant attack on the most basic principles underlying the international order since the end of World War II, principles which Moscow has freely signed on to but ignored. President Putin seeks to crush Ukraine's democracy, intimidate other countries where the embers of democratic ambition burn, and by implication, undermine all democracies everywhere. We must respond 
by uniting around and strengthening our commitment to our shared democratic values and the rules-based order. The NATO treaty is clear. We are an alliance of democracies. As NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg said during the recent ministerial in Riga, Latvia, NATO was created to defend democracy, freedom, and the rule of law. These values define who we are. They are not optional, unquote. And as President Zelensky of Ukraine said during his recent address to this body, to the Congress, right now the destiny of our country, Ukraine, is being decided. The destiny of our people, whether the Ukrainians will be free, whether they will be able to preserve their democracy. NATO stands for the preservation of that democracy. And we believe the Senate call for in this resolution must be part of NATO's work to build a bulwark against authoritarianism and dem democratic backsliding as we proceed. I want to thank the bipartisan group of members of the U.S. delegation for their support who have joined us in this effort, and I urge my colleagues to vote in favor of this strong bipartisan resolution. I reserve the balance of my time.